Today we're gonna take a deep look and compare these seven coffee grinders. Each one of these are a manual hand grinder and each I would consider to be a budget friendly option, especially considering what other options there are on the market. But first, before I introduce you to these grinders, I am so excited for this comparison because I believe approachability to specialty coffee is better now than it has ever been. Been. You see, quality grinders are becoming cheaper and more accessible with ongoing research and development that is happening in the coffee industry. Also, after studying and analyzing and talking with some of these grinder manufacturers, I've discovered something very interesting that I think you'll find fascinating too. So stick around for that. I'm intrigued. But for many, a hand grinder is one of their first burr grinders because of their value. My first burr grinder was the Porlex Mini. At the time, it was one of maybe three options available in its price bracket. But now we have so many options. Maybe too many? You see, I put a poll out on Instagram a few weeks back ago asking which budget hand grinder I should compare in this video. And these were the most popular, but there were tons of other options as well. So while there may be other options today, I'm using these ones because, well, you guys decided that these are the grinders you wanted to see in this comparison. So today we're gonna to be comparing the Timor C2, the Easy Presso JX, the Hario Slim, the Vessel Java, the Porlex Mini, the Varia hand grinder, and also the Normcore hand grinder. And narrowing it down to these seven were very tough. So there are other grinders that we could have included in this comparison. Also, I really wanna give some of these coffee grinders away to you. So be sure to stick around. In this video, I'm gonna describe how you can win one of these coffee grinders. Also, I'm gonna have all of these linked down in the description for your ease if you wanna check any of these out. Also, there's gonna be a time link. This is gonna be a longer video. If you wanna skip ahead to any of these coffee grinders or come back at a later time and check out this review again, I'll make sure that that is all down below as well. So let's start off with the time more C2. This little coffee grinder is $85 at the time of recording. For that price, you'd expect a pretty mediocre coffee grinder, but it isn't. At least most things about this grinder aren't mediocre. So let's start with the build of this guy. It uses a full aluminum shell that honestly feels pretty premium and durable. And in this white color, it reminds me kind of of my fellow EKG kettle finish, which is also in white, and I'm totally okay with that. But since this is Time Wars budget option, it does save money on certain parts, things like its plastic lid, and even the internals of this grinder have some plastic pieces. I mean, the plastic itself doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel premium either. It should definitely be noted that this can be addressed by spending some more on other models in their lineup, like the Nano or Slim, which offer more premium materials at a slightly higher price point. The C2 uses a 38 millimeter conical burr made of stainless steel. And the grind quality is good. And comparing it to other grinders like the Encore or other entry level electric grinders, two to four times its price, the C2 can often outperform in particle distribution and also create great, great cups of coffee. For this price, you'd be hard pressed to find a better burr set. But we're gonna come back to this because while analyzing some of these other coffee grinders, I found a similarity in this grinder's burrs and some of the others, but we'll come back to that. I can't wait. On the other hand, the adjustment for this grinder is okay. It uses a plastic knob with larger steps. It's very precise and there's no slippage and it'll work for most needs as long as you're using this for filtered coffee. If you are, this shouldn't give you any issues. While this grinder can grind for espresso, the adjustments are too large to finally dial in a grind. And so for that, I'd say this isn't the best grinder for you. It can do it, but there may be other better options for espresso. Time War suggests that this grinder is ideal for pour overs at 15 to 24 clicks. At 20 clicks, it was grinding around 1100 to 1200 microns based on the Kruv ruler. 20 clicks, this grinder is decently fast and easy to grind, taking roughly 35 seconds to grind 20 grams of coffee. That's pretty good. So what are some cons about this guy? Well, the fit and finish of this grinder isn't up to some of the others in this test. Things like the lid wiggling on the axis and plastic parts really make it feel a little less premium. Overall, I do love the Time More C2 for what it is. Is it the perfect coffee grinder? No, it's not. But this grinder is very affordable and offers grind quality unmatched at this price point before this. I think you could argue it's the new standard for budget grinders. We started this comparison off strong. Let's see how the others fare. The next grinder on the list is the Easy Presso JX. Now this is a grinder I've been really growing fond of since starting this test. I've had it for a couple weeks now and it's awesome. This is the JX model of the J series from Easy Presso and it comes in around $140 US. And while that might seem like a lot, and it is, 
for what this grinder offers, I'd argue it's pretty good value compared to what else is on the market. Easy Presso, spelt one Z Presso in English, is a coffee brand out of Taiwan who are creating some fantastic coffee grinders for the home barista. This JX model is one of those. And while they offer a cheaper option, I wanted to review a variety of grinders in this price bracket. And the C2, the one that's cheaper than this, was similar to other grinders that we're gonna be reviewing. So I opted for the JX. Now the JX is a grinder I had purchased directly from Easy Presso, and they had it shipped to me in Canada in just under three days. In the world we currently live in, I'm pretty impressed with that. It also has a full aluminum body and a design that feels very Apple-esque. Are you dressed like Steve Jobs? The internal bean chamber is rounded and the metal work is well crafted. Weighing at 700 grams, this grinder isn't necessarily the best for travel. It's kind of heavy and it's kind of big, but it's an excellent grinder for daily use. Details like its maple handle and the satisfying grind adjustment knob are things that give it just a wonderful feel and experience that is just pleasant to use daily. Speaking of grind adjustments, the JX uses a system of 10 large numbers per rotation with two clicks in between each number for a total of 30 clicks per rotation. This is really nice to dial in your coffee for espresso, but if you do plan on getting this for espresso, I'd recommend upgrading to the JX Pro model, which is one step up from this guy, which has a more precise stepless adjustment system with slightly more range. Regardless, this will do filter coffee very, very well with lots of play and adjustment. Now, the interesting thing about this grinder, it has a whopping 48 millimeter stainless steel conical burr set and they grind so fast about 20 grams in 24 seconds twice the speed of the c2 which is already a fast grinder and the coffee it produces is great too i wouldn't say it's vastly better than the time Wars 38 millimeter set but instead just different using what option o describes as a contemporary style burr versus the time Wars conventional these burrs create a cup that is often high in clarity and acidity and transparency while lacking some of the sweetness and complexity that the time more offers depending on your brew preference this may be a good thing or a bad thing but for me i prefer this style of burr flavor profile for filter coffee but I'd love to know what you prefer in your cups down in the comments below. What are some cons about this grinder? Well, it can create a lot of retention and static. These things are both smaller issues as static can be addressed with the Ross droplet technique, a little spray of water on the coffee beans before you grind. And the retention on a hand grinder isn't a deal breaker unlike electric grinders because a little brush that it comes with can brush that away in a matter of a few seconds. I wouldn't be concerned about retention on these grinders as much. So what's the verdict on this guy? Well, this is an excellent grinder that isn't perfect, but offers great value. While its cup results might not be drastically better than other grinders that are cheaper than it, I think its workflow and build quality make it an option definitely worth considering. This next grinder is a very unique hand grinder in that it's manufactured by a company who isn't in the coffee industry. This is the Vessel Java, and this is a grinder that is vastly different from anything else we're gonna compare. When Vessel was creating this grinder, they had the outdoors and camping in mind. Quite often they will urinate outdoors. Its body and design is pretty rugged and compact with its grind handle able to turn into a carabiner and securely clip onto a bag. I've used this thing for traveling a few times already and it's been really, really convenient. The lid uses a push button to release and the magnetic handle stores away in the grounds bin to keep it as compact as possible. Again, I love this and I think it's well thought out for the camper and the one who wants a grinder on the go. But this unique design and the Canadian engineering come with a premium price tag. At $145 US, this grinder is more expensive than the JX from Easy Presso and easily the most expensive grinder on this test and on this table. While this is surprising to me, I do also understand that this is a company who normally sells to a niche market in campers and outdoorsmen, and they'll likely pay for that premium price tag for convenience and travel, as long as it grinds well, right? So let's talk about that, because this is where things get very interesting. Straight up, the Java does grind coffee very well, and you likely won't be disappointed in its grind distribution. In fact, it grinds on par with the C2 from Time War. And there's good reason for that. Taking apart this grinder, it seems that the Java uses an identical burr set to the C2. You see, my initial impressions were to disregard this as my eyes playing games on me, or that at a microscopic level, these burrs couldn't be the exact same. There's just no way a company wouldn't do but that. But then I did some digging, and both of these burrs being manufactured in China this is totally a possibility, but it gets more interesting. Stick around because these two aren't the only two grinders with the same burrs. 
We'll come back to this. But back to the vessel, the build quality is superior to the Time Warp, but overall the grind quality is identical, which isn't a bad thing since the C2 delivers fantastic results in the cup. Again, this is a niche grinder from a niche company for a niche market. So what are some cons of this grinder? Well, this grinder does have a smaller grind arm with mediocre ball bearings. It feels a little less luxury than even the C2 in terms of grinding coffee. Also, the steps of adjustment are fairly large like the C2, which makes espresso hard to manage. In fact, it seems like this grinder is calibrated to grind even coarse at similar clicks to other grinders on this table. So espresso should just be avoided, in my opinion, at least in my experience. It's also fairly small and has a max capacity around 20 grams, which could be a pro for some people, but for me, brewing on the daily is just not possible. So what's the verdict? This is a grinder that is designed for a specific person. If you find yourself always on the go and lacking space in your luggage to pack a coffee grinder, or you want it to be compact without floating pieces. The vessel is a great option at a premium price tag, but I don't think there's a better camping grinder on the market, if I'm honest. We've got some more grinders to cover, but at this point in the video, if you haven't yet hit that like button, do me a favor and please do. It really helps out this channel. And if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, consider clicking that subscribe button for more videos like this. This is the Hario Slim, and this is a grinder that's been around for many years, and it comes in around 30 dollars. Now I'm not going to spend too much time on this one today as there are so many reviews already available for this guy, but it does offer a very accessible price point for people to get into a burr grinder. This guy is fully plastic and slightly taller than some of these other coffee grinders. It uses a ceramic burr set, which was incredibly popular at one time, but not as popular anymore for many reasons. One of those being grind distribution. For this grinder, it's not great. It'll do, but it does create a fairly inconsistent grind, even at lower grind settings where distribution is normally a little bit better. Here's the deal. This is one of the OGs of manual coffee grinding. Thing is seriously OG. There are better options if you spend slightly more, but at the time when this was released, it was a great option for many. If you were on a strike budget, this can be a great option to save some money and get into grinding coffee. But will it last long? I mean, maybe. These things have seen the test of time. But when buying this, don't expect to fall in love with the experience. It's fine, but it's just not great. Like I've said, grind consistency isn't great on this guy. And I would argue it's not possible for espresso, but fine for methods like AeroPress, but it's just not up to par with some of these other great grinders. And it can be very slow, taking about one minute and 30 seconds to grind about 20 grams at a medium course setting compared to the JX at 24 seconds. It just doesn't even come close. This is the Varia hand grinder. An awesome little guy coming in at $120. Varia is a newer company in the coffee industry, but has quickly become a fairly popular one, winning an SCA award for best non-electrical brewer of 2020 and designing hand grinders like this one, a grinder that is fairly affordable, but really nice to use. This again has a full aluminum body similar to the C2, but it has no plastics or cheap feeling materials. It definitely feels like something more luxurious than its price tag. It has a wooden handle and great ball bearings for a smooth experience. It's also got 24 clicks per rotation, giving it more adjustments than some of the other grinders on this table and a greater ability to do espresso. And while I'm not a huge fan of hand grinding espresso, it's possible with the Varia. But let's talk about the Varia's burrs, because again, we have another 38 millimeter stainless steel conical burr set. And yeah, it's the same as the Time Wars and Vessels burr. But before you leave in frustration and send nasty hate mail to these companies, I really do wanna talk about this. When I realized this unbelievable burrception, I reached out to Varia to comment on what was happening here. Are they ripping off their burrs from Time War? What was happening? Who was making this? Burr set. And Varia responded with transparency that they sourced their burrs from the same supplier as some other grind manufacturers. And they are aware that this reality does exist. They did comment that this burr is manufactured by a top tier supplier and that quality was a top priority in creating this grinder. So by this knowledge, Time More isn't creating this burr, but neither is Vessel. In fact, there may be other grinders in the market with this burr. It's very possible. In fact, if any of these companies want to contact me directly about this, please do. I love seeing this type of growth in the industry, but I also don't want to claim any false information here. But friends, I actually don't believe that these grinders having the same burr set is actually that big of a deal. Like the burr results are good, especially for the price. And while I'd like to see some more honest transparency from these companies and how they're sourcing their burrs, this isn't abnormal in the world that we live in today. Many products we use daily are carbon copies of something else. In fact, one of my favorite grinders. The Niche Zero openly uses a Mazarkoni burr in all of their products. And many 
home braces are replacing burrs with SSP burrs that are used across multiple grinders. So this is even seen within the coffee industry. But back to the Varia, it does have more adjustability than the C2 and better build quality, but it also has a higher price tag. I love using this just as much, if not more than the C2, but it's slightly more expensive. So that should be noted. What are some cons about this grinder? Well, this grinder does have a lot of retention at times. The grounds canister can also feel like it's coming loose when you're using it. It never falls off. It just feels very unpleasant and incorrect when it does come loose. This is a great option if you'd like to buy a grinder with slightly similar results to the Time More with a more premium feel. While you can also buy a Nano or Slim from Time More, this just opens up some other options from a newer coffee company and I'm all for that. The Porlex Mini, as I already mentioned, was my first burr grinder. So I'll try to be unbiased in this section of the video. Like the Hario Slim, I won't spend much time on this as it's been around for years and there are plenty of reviews on this guy. Also like the Hario, it uses a ceramic burr with a similar adjustment system, but where it differs from the Hario is its build quality. You see the Porlex Mini is fully brushed stainless steel with the rubber grips so that it doesn't slip while grinding. And it also has a little handle holder for when traveling, which I've always found it just to be a nice touch. But this grinder is expensive. At $70 US, this runs about the same price as the Norm Core, which is up next, and close to the C2 at just $15 less. So is it worth it? Well, in my opinion, honestly, no. While this grinder is built in Japan and truly paved the way for good budget grinders, in today's market, I think this grinder is outdated and doesn't stand up to the quality of some of the other grinders on this table, especially the Norm Core, which we'll get to. But if you have a Porlex, enjoy it. I still love mine. I wouldn't say you need to upgrade unless you don't have another grinder and it's your daily driver, then maybe it's worth upgrading to one of these grinders. But otherwise, if that's just your travel grinder, I think it's still a great option. I think where it falls short is similar to what makes the Hario hard to recommend. The ceramic ceramic burrs are slow at 20 grams in about one minute and 20 seconds and often very inconsistent. It's just not a great experience to grind coffee with, often leaving my forearms sore and my taste buds just empty. I just find it hard to recommend compared to some of these other options at similar price points. Last but not least is the Normcore grinder. And this is one that I'm excited about as this little guy comes in at $75 US. This Normcore grinder actually shares a very similar shell to that of the Varia. Actually, again, we have some shared components here, but the Normcore wrapped in this textured vinyl. It does have a different lid to the Varia and thankfully a completely different burr set too. The Normcore does use a 38 millimeter stainless conical set, but it has a design that more resembles that of the Easy Press. The results in the cup can be similar to often lacking the sweetness and complexity you find on the Time More or the Varia or the Vessel and often favoring high clarity transparency. I've got to say for the price of this grinder, I'm impressed. Keep in mind, this guy comes in at $10 cheaper than the Time War. And other than the lid, there are no plastic parts to be found on this little guy. It's a fully aluminum build. But like the Time War, it does have less adjustability in its grind range, offering 12 clicks per rotation. This grinder is great for filter coffee, but I can't rightfully recommend this for you for espresso. But it does make a wonderfully delicious cup of coffee. In fact, in testing, the Norm Core was the most evenly distributed coffee based on the Groove Sifter test, resulting in 68% of the coffee in its sweet spot between 400 and 1100 microns. Does this mean it's necessarily the best? Definitely not, but it does speak to the grinder's even particle size that it produces. So take that for what it is, but the norm core is also fairly quick, grinding 20 grams in about 40 seconds. So what are some cons about this grinder? Well, the plastic lid feels very cheap and I've already had to replace one part of the lid already. Norm core was happy to help though and sent a new part as soon as the issue happened, but talking to others who own this grinder, this seems to be an ongoing issue. Hopefully norm core can address the lid on this guy. So which of these coffee grinders would I buy if I had to purchase just one? <sighs> I think you would be happy with any of these grinders. Well, any of these grinders. And for me, it would have to come down to the Easy Press So or the Norm Core. Now keep in mind, I do prefer the flavor profile that this burr style produces. If you do like more sweeter, complex cups of coffee, the C2 and the Varia might be great options for you. I do think the Vessel is great, but it's specifically for a certain person and I just couldn't use it every single day. Again, I wouldn't recommend these two ceramic burr coffee grinders unless you can find them used. But if I had to just pick one, I think it would have to be the Easy Presso.
I just think the build quality and design of this grinder is fantastic for the price. And I've never seen a grinder with this kind of build quality at this low of a price before. Again, I can't stress enough, any of these coffee grinders would be great. And I'm just so excited to see the price point of hand grinders come down and the accessibility just open up. Again, I, I would pick the JX, but I would be happy to use any of these daily. But before you go, I do wanna give away some of these coffee grinders. But first, if you like this video, please support the channel by tamping that like button down below. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Like I mentioned already, most of these grinders were purchased out of my own pocket. In fact, many of my videos are not supported simply because I wanna offer unbiased reviews and thoughts from my own mouth. But I wanna keep making quality videos like this and keep going. To win these grinders, in the description below, you'll find a link to become a Patreon. I don't wanna sell you on something that you're not interested in. I'm not gonna convince you into anything, so there's really no obligation here. But if you'd like to support this channel and help me continue to do videos like this, click the link down below and you'll be eligible to win some of these grinders, as well as future exclusive giveaways that I'll be doing ongoing with Patreon-supported reviews. Also, a portion of the proceeds from select Patreon ranks will go to the charity of World Coffee Research. But again, there's absolutely no pressure. That about sums it up for this video. Be sure to drop a comment down below if you enjoyed this video. And continue to brew great coffee and continue to brew at home. Peace. We'll see you guys in the next one.